Hello and welcome to the release presentation of CURL 7.88.0, released today, February 15th, 2023. Uh, and I'm happy to be here and uh, explain this to you. I'm, of course, Daniel. I sort of run the CURL project. I founded it a long time ago. I mentioned a here that I'm, I'm actually both at Twitter and on Mastodon these days, so that's where you find me. I work for Wolf SSL and that's my website if you want to figure out any details. I do these presentations in the same style every time. I try to stick to the same setup and basically we talk about some numbers from the release. I get, get into security details or security vulnerabilities uh, advisories from this release. Some of the features changes we've done in this release my favorite bug fixes or at least some bug fixes to talk about that might uh, affect you and be, be interesting to you something about what we're going to remove going forward and what's next and this time it's actually more interesting than many other times what's next and I'll get into that uh, and uh, in detail of course so we are talking about release number 213 the curl release 2413 <clears throat> and this time a lot of people helped out and uh, uh, exactly 78 contributors and a lot of them knew more than half 2800 2812 in total 42 out of these actually authored commits and again a lot of new commit authors 18 new ones so we're at 1,119 committers, commit authors in total. So we keep adding a lot of people, uh, mentioning a lot of people, and I can see that I'm in the way of that number. Uh, <coughs> sometimes people uh, think that I'm doing this alone or that this is my project, but I want to emphasize and highlight that we are a lot of people, and sort of that's that is what makes this such a cool and good and successful project so we have this routine of course this cycle and that means that every 56 days we do a curl release and so we did this time as well 56 days and that means that we are now at 9098 days since the first curl release fun number huge and of course we're closing into the 25 year anniversary and um, more about that in a second first going uh, into some security advisories from this release of course you go to this url in the bottom here if you want to read up or when you want to read up about all the details because there are more details about these than i'm going to mention here but i'm going to do a quick overview because the first one is the hsts ignore the multiple requests yes we had hsts issues before we have two hsts issues in this release and this is the first one so basically if you do multiple uh, requests on the same command line. Uh, the subsequent ones are not upgraded according to HTTPS rules. Uh, contrary to what you expect and contrary to what we intended, but due to uh, some sort of logic flaw or actually lack of implementation in curl. Reported by Harry uh, Severity Low, Harry Sintanen, who has um, reported a lot of other issues uh, uh, too in the past. CVE 2023 23914. You will see that they are in a. In, I mean, they're uh, after each other in in a, in a sequence. Of our CVE numbers. Uh, and the, then we had another one very similar to this one. HSTS. We call it amnesia with parallel. So uh, if you do a lot of URLs in parallel with the you know with the dash dash parallel option in, with the command line tool, curl will actually. Uh, overwrite the HSTS cache file with the latest transfers uh, information. So basically, if you would do three files in parallel, for example, um, uh, the, 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 the one that actually arrives last, that transfers data would be saved in the, in the cache. So the other ones would be forgotten, uh, contrary to what you expect, and it would sort of could then lead to some accidental security issues. Severity low. <coughs> also, Harris Internet, uh, this is then CVE 2023, 23915. And as you can see, both 
of these were, were HSTS. We fixed HSTS security problems in the past. So it's slowly sort of ramping up as an area with a lot of past security problems, at least low ones. And of course, the third one now here is also one that we have been touching on in the past. Uh, we call this the HTTP multi-header compression denial of service. It is basically, this is also very similar to one we already had last year. Basically, uh, if a server malicious in the possibly then probably uh, sends back a response a set of response headers basically asking for uh, compression 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 you know a lot of different compressions because they you can append them serially uh, we had one of those problems before and then we set the cap you can only do five but i think it was my fix my fix was lame because the cap was only per single header so if you would do multiple headers and you do many compressions uh, um, well, you do compressions in many headers instead, you would circumvent that check in curl. So you could still reach that malloc bomb situation. You could basically then do uh, hundreds of sort of chained gzips or whatever. It could, you know, explode to gigabytes or, well, basically limitless amount of memory required um, for the client kind of a silly or i would say that maybe all three of these were rather silly because they were within areas we already fixed problems before and they sort of um they were all basically bad fixes in the past where we should have covered these circumstances as well this one uh, cve 2023 23916 reported by patrick monorat we actually consider it severe to medium just because it can actually by a malicious server then cause a rather nasty denial of service since any client that actually gets one of these uh, transfers and supports uh, the uncompression by default it will basically blow up because no no client can handle all that memory that this could uh, require <clears throat> oh well that's uh, that's life right so um that said three security things out of the way going forward we did some new things in this release and i want to highlight them for you because that's more fun than talking about um, boring security problems <coughs> uh, and we actually have i think do we have six uh, we count six changes and the first or there's some kind of in a random order, so it's not like an important order or anything, but we introduced, and, and the, this is a new uh, option for libcurl, and you can also set it with the command line co tool called dash dash HTTP3 only. HTTP3 support is still experimental, so we can actually, we, we do uh, retain the right here to change these things going forward. But still, this is a new option that uh, you can use to ask curl to use specifically HTTP version 3 and not try to fall back to any uh, earlier HTTP version. Because the previous uh, or the existing uh, curl HTTP version 3 option will now fall back uh, or in case version 3 doesn't uh, work and then we we'll attempt to do an earlier HTTP 3, uh, sorry, an earlier HTTP version. Basically making the option a little bit more useful because now you can use it and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it will fall back and use an older version, which is more in line with how I think most users actually want it to work. And in order to fix some of those, both of those uh, HSTS problems I already mentioned, we actually had to introduce a new way to share HSTS data between different transfers or between handles. So this is another library option that now allows sharing of HSTS between transfers. This is just a specific uh, option name you use when you set up a share uh, with a curl a share API. This is also already now used by the curl tool by default, so the curl tool will share HSTS between transfers. Not that you need to care about that, but it is thanks to this function we fixed those HSTS security problems I mentioned before. Um, <clears throat> we also added support for this curl u puny code this is an option to the curl url api that allows a user to ex 
sort of extract a, a, a URL and ask uh, curl to deliver the hostname puny code encoded instead of delivering it in, in the raw form. And the reason for this is basically since when you provide an IDN name, you know, international domain name to curl, you could do those in IDN is a funny thing, right? So you can you can pretty much provide the same host name in a lot of different permutations and they will all encode to the same result in the end. Um, that makes it so that you can do basically an endless uh, amount of different variations in of IDN versions when you generate a URL. But uh, if they all come down to the same Punicode version, that's one way to, for you to figure out that they are actually the same one. So now we allow applications using the curl URL API to actually figure that out, which previously was uh, harder. In the curl tool, we introduce um, support for these uh, certificates the, uh, and number of certificates to the dash dash write out option. So you can now actually uh, output this certificate chain from of the server. You pr previously people have, we have always sort of referred users and told users to use the OpenSSL tool for this. And it has been working like that and it's OpenSSL can still do it. But OpenSS, the OpenSSL tool doesn't, for example, support HTTP 3. So in case you have an HTTP 3 server and you want a server certificate, you can't do that easily with any command line tool until now, because now curl can do it and then curl can do it with any HTTP version. You can do, uh, you know, old style, new style, whatever. <coughs> and this is limited to some of the TLS libraries. Curl supports not all of them. So hopefully going forward, we will support more of the TLS versions, but it, this supports at least um, OpenSSL, which is the most commonly used TLS version with um, curl. I said that there were six changes and if you look in the release notes they will sort of these four are actually listed as six changes because the two top ones are actually listed as two because they're for the library and for the command line tool so they both sort of that's why I mentioned six six seven four uh, sorry it really doesn't matter these are the changes and until we count or the script that I have it counts 173 bug fixes for this release and of course a lot of them are small build fixes documentation fixes things that aren't really you know eyebrows raising uh, level of bug fixes but I sort of went through them all and I picked out my favorites some of the ones to highlight to talk about here because maybe you will care about them uh, now or later and um, I put them under some different labels labels <coughs> so library fixes in 788.0 i um i blogged about this separately and this is uh, we have in um, this time around when we switched to 2023 actually decided to remove all the um, gear ranges from the copyright lines in all content all files in git actually all copyright headers and copyright information is still present but we have removed the year ranges pretty much because they're unnecessary and uh, they're just an annoyance to keep up to date or change or update and blah 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 and when we no longer do that we mention who owns the copyright uh, but we don't say any year ranges anymore i mean the where everything is in git you can still figure that out if you want to for libcurl we also support um, we updated the um, to, uh, the maximum size for the download buffer size to up to 10 megabyte. This was actually previously set to 500k, I believe, half a megabyte. And now I just bumped it because, I mean, it's easy for us. It's just an artificial limit. So we just set it somewhere so that you don't just set it too large by mistake or anything. But if you, for example, do some weird, really weird high speed transfers, maybe you want to try out and see if larger buffer makes better sense for you. Now you can do that. And then, uh, uh, I'm not sure it's sensible, but uh, we can do that and we can try it out and, and, and sure, this is now the new max. <clears throat> and another silly thing that really won't matter to many users at all is that when you build curl with a uh, 
and you build it now debug enabled which typically a lot of us developers do when we work on curl and you know we work on features debugging blah blah it will now output a warning when libcurl starts in the verbose output saying hello this is a debug build version debug build version don't run it in production because uh, I noticed, or actually, thanks to a bug report from someone who had some issues, I realized that some users are actually by mistake running debug enabled versions in production. And that is a dangerous thing to do for various reasons. And, and it's a, a silly thing to do because you're also sacrificing and um, getting a worse performance because debug is debug. It's, it won't run with the highest performance. So don't use debug enabled libcurl in production. You can still do it, but you will get the warning. Um, we introduced a new test suite, or Stefan did. Uh, it's a new set of tests to, to run uh, HTTP tests, rather advanced it's HTTP tests for, for HTTP 1, 2, 3, um, really, and, and make sure that curl does ha handle HTTP correctly. And we did have a lot of HTTP tests already before, so this is nothing new in terms of that, but this is a new test suite that makes um, makes it much easier and better to do, for example, a lot of uh, a lot of requests or a lot of parallel requests or stuff like fiddling with the bits when you have many, many requests or many streams and many connections and stuff like that, which the previous test suite really uh, made it more um, maybe not hard, but a little bit awkward to do. And this um, this opens up many more uh, opportunities and uh, options for us to test and verify that we do HP 2 and HP 3 correctly. This, of course, in our work to make sure that we soon hope to be able to remove the experimental tag from the HP 3 support. Other stuff we did still in the library then with so many library stuff. So I, uh, I added a second slide here. Um, I, for some reason, I ended up in the URL and code decode functions one day and figured uh, and then uh, I noticed that, hey, we could uh, really speed up these functions. And so I did. So I think the encoding got three times fi faster and the deco decoding seven times faster or something or vice versa, much faster. I guess nobody will notice because it, this is not a thing that we do a lot. But hey, if we're going to do it, why not do it as fast as possible? And uh, the code really wasn't, I mean, we didn't sacrifice any readability or it didn't grow much in size either. It just became much faster. Um, mostly it became much less slow actually because it was a bit of a not uh, ideally implemented before. <coughs> so now, much faster. Um, so, uh, I also had this discussion with someone who mentioned that when you specify the no, no proxy option to curl, you know, if you want to use a proxy, that's fine. And then you can provide this no proxy, op uh, no proxy option that says, uh, don't use the proxy for this, these particular patterns. And if you list those patterns with just space separation, no commas, it works because curl supports that for some reason uh, when it's supposed to be comma and or space so anyway it turns out that since no proxy is more of a standard thing since it supports a, an environment to variable and stuff so many other tools and, and systems also support that no proxy but they don't support just space separations so basically by curl supporting this we encourage a format that other tools don't support so I decided, we decided that we are going to deprecate the support for space only separation in the no proxy. And I said it, let's deprecate that and we remove it later. So we sort of, this is you know, long heads up. We will remove it in the future. I will get back to when. In the OpenSSL code, Stefan found out that well, hey we can do we can do some optimization by doing things in a different order and suddenly WAMP the first um, connection setup would run much faster than it previously did so in in the basic simple cases we actually gained quite a lot of time especially if you did a, one of these simple a really small HTTPS URL for example with very little content 
one of those um, operations can now become much faster uh, without sacrificing anything just doing things in a different order in a more clever order actually so yay for that faster curl is better curl and uh, for some reason uh, we have never, we hadn't ever implemented the data pending function in curl for the NSS backend, which allowed NSS. If you built curl with NSS, it could end up in a in a deadlock basically. When you drained the socket for all data, but the data was held by NSS buffers, and curl wouldn't really figure that out, so there would be no activity on the socket, so nothing to do. But not all data was drained from NSS because NSS hadn't delivered it and we didn't really uh, do it correctly so now it does which is uh, sort of ironic because NSS is also scheduled for removal later on so sure we fixed it but probably I mean the three users doing this using uh, curl with NSS um, haven't noticed we changed the implementation of socket pair which we do for windows primarily um, because they don't have socket pair uh, function. So we have uh, our own socket pair. And uh, <laughs> and when we set up a socket pair, it actually you know makes the socket pair implementation emulation or it works exactly as the socket pair function does. W we set it up and we verify that it actually, you know, it creates a listener and someone connecting to that listener. So it's actually a socket on localhost talking over localhost. Uh, and when setting that up, uh, it verifies that it actually talks to itself and by verifying that it talks to itself we also this um, made it not support uh, Mandel middle sniffers because the verification would then say hey that's not us it's uh, it's the man in the middle thing we fail error out go home turns out that we shouldn't do that because on Windows people are used to running these kind of tools so there are lots of you know antivirus kind of tools that are doing this midm things on uh, sockets so our verification failed and curl thus failed in ways uh, on systems that otherwise it should have worked so now we actually allow this sniffing so we now verify ourselves by sending a little bit of data through the socket pair to see is this our data then sure we're fine but that also allows that the sniffer to sniff on the traffic i think it's a bit, it's an awfully ugly habit but um, hey who am i to tell what you're doing with your systems <coughs> um okay so um, protocol wise um we fixed a bunch of things in the WebSocket implementation. Also another experimental feature. But hey, please, if you want WebSockets in, in curl libcurl, go ahead and enable it in your build, try it out, and, and, and please report bugs. This is the only way we can ever remove the experimental uh, label by us fixing the things moving forward. And I think we improved WebSocket pretty significantly in this cycle. Um, thanks to users trying it out, telling, hey, this doesn't work, or hey, what is this really supposed to do this? And I, it worked better when I fixed these little things. So we're moving forward. And talking about protocols and, and uh, things that never actually worked the way you thought it would, uh, we fixed the problem in the dict protocol handler. Uh, and you wouldn't expect that to happen in 2023, right? So it turned out we did some of the URL handling wrong in the path when we s handle uh, the dict protocol. We also fixed a regression in the HA it's wrongly spelled on the slide HA proxy is called HA proxy is a product HA proxy is also kind of a very lightweight protocol how sending stuff to <laughs> a, a proxy and we did it wrong yeah, in the wrong order in terms of plain socket TLS handshake blah 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 fix now in the curl tool some of the things that we fix or at, actually I think these are three regression I'm going to mention we fixed the hiding of some of the uh, sensitive command line secrets. Um, we've, I know I messed this up before, but we had apparently messed it, messed it up again, but now they're fixed. So the, we make an effort to try to hide some of the command line options from, you know, if you use 
dash u for username and password and you do if you do that and then you do ps in another shell it actually tries to hide that username and password so you, it, it doesn't reveal themselves that easily it's the best effort it's not a security thing so we don't consider this a security problem but hey we, we make an effort to try to hide it you really should make an effort to not use command uh, sort of passwords on the command line anyway we had this fun problem or I um, f um, where we uh, we in some cases when we would do upload we would parse the URL in the curl tool and if uh, by doing so <coughs> when if the if the URL didn't actually qualify if it was wrong somehow and in this case someone found out when there was a um, space in the URL, we would return out of memory instead of, you know, uh, weird uh, bad syntax URL or whatever. No, sorry. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, it would, say, it would say out of memory. Someone discovered this who used Git FTP. And Git FTP is a sort of a little tool that then underneath the hood uses curl to push things over FTP. And it was say suddenly out of memory. And that was uh, very mysterious until we figured out that, oh, right, uh, it was actually because it was an illegal file name. So it created an illegal URL, so it couldn't uh, transfer to that. Fixed now. We also fixed the dash dash rate option, which was a regression that completely broke the function in 7.87.0. Um, silly, but um, now it works. So we did some fun things. We also, uh, I mean, in the protocol implementation, as I mentioned, we are working hard and on uh, making uh, down the line, making sure that we can do HTTP three. That's not experimental, and uh, HTTP of course, HTTP two of course, one of those protocols that is more and more commonly used. So we are working on that as well. So um, this time we fixed lot of things actually well, one of the primary things maybe is that uh, the if you ask for http3 now we do http3 selection the happy eyeball style and and you may wonder what's happy eyeball style http3 and that basically means that we're trying http3 and slightly delayed we also try one of the older http versions so we, we start out with http3 and a few hundred milliseconds after that we fire up an h2 test uh, uh, attempt so meaning that if the H3 fails, we can still use the older protocol versions. Uh, this is totally new in, in curl s s uh, in this version. But it also makes it much easier for someone to actually try HTTP3 because it will fall back and use the older version in case the HTTP3 version doesn't work. We fixed uh, a rather silly or annoying maybe stall that made it, uh, if you would well, if you would upload and download at the same time in H2 and H3, we could end up in a situation where it would just deadlock and stop uploading when you were still downloading or whatever. Uh, just a, a silly situation. It wasn't that common, but um, we figured it out and it should be um, fixed now. Stefan did a pretty fine optimization in the H2 code which makes, makes curl now aggregate a lot of small updates in the H2 um, handling. But pretty much if you send, you know, send small, 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 small packages and they get into the TLS and it becomes uh, TLS records and send off, it's just inefficient, becomes a lot more data split up in, in many segments. And, and um, by aggregating them, he could improve and speed up the H2 handling significant actually I, I, at least the first ones and in some particular cases <coughs> also related to h2 and and uh, actually also related to speed ups and performance improvements as i mentioned a bunch of them already uh, stefan found another and made another improvement in in how we handle uh, pretty much when we do multiplexed transfers over h2 and we have the same transfer appearing you know multiplex many times on the same connection we now get those transfers off the connection in, in um, 
better way, in an optimized way, that significantly improves transfer speeds for H2 in these cases. Uh, which again, probably not many people will notice, but it's, it's it's still good to do things as fast as we can w when we are doing the things that we do anyway. We're going to remove a few things going forward. I th mention things because we have, you know, we put things on in the deprecation list. We highlight stuff. We want to remove these things going forward, right? So I always, and we put things in the list a long time ahead, at least six months into the future, and, and we mentioned that to everyone. And this is the section where I repeat things that we're going to remove. So if you have a problem with any of what I'm, anything of these, I'm going to mention now. Please um, shout at us at the mailing list, on the mailing list, on uh, wherever you find us, and and we will discuss it. Oh shoot, that's the wrong. Okay, so <laughs> okay, funny, funny slide uh, mistake. Okay, we're starting out that uh, I mentioned it briefly before. In March 2023, we are going to remove support for builds without 64-bit data types. And this, again, this is the 64-bit data type. If your system and compiler, if you don't have a long, long or alternative that is 64 bit or larger uh, you will not be able to build curl anymore starting in march 2023 and march 2023 that's yeah uh, very close in time right that's the next curl release the next curl release we're going to do this cut out support for systems without this and then august also this year then but a bit later, we are going to remove support for these two TLS library backends. NSS, uh, there has not been any debate about us doing that. Um, so that's going to happen. We have a discussion about the GSKit removal. GSKit is an IBM TLS library most commonly used on the formerly known OS 400. Uh, it's not OS 400 and no more. It's IBM I, I think. I is in the letter I. Uh, so I have advocated removal of this because it's so um, badly maintained and uh, often broken. But um, when I signaled this initially at least there was a lot of yelling from people who are actually uh, stuck on systems where this is the only working tls backend for curl so we'll see i still have this marked as removal because that's uh, i haven't seen any convincing arguments that anything is better uh, now even after my uh, sort of alerts here and then the formally mentioned space separation of no pro no proxy patterns we're going to remove the support of that in july 2024 and that is way ahead i put the sort of the date way ahead next year in next summer we'll remove that so just you know make sure that you s separate your no proxy patterns with a comma and not with just spaces and then you'll be fine and you have a year uh, to do that until we remove support for it and that's just, you know that's a minor thing but i still wanted to do it with a plenty of time for everyone to uh, adjust and then uh, you shouldn't be too angry with me when we eventually actually you know do it so <clears throat> the next release is going to be version 8 8.0.0 um and that is, of course, the, the so this this means that this version we're shipping today uh, is the end of the line of version seven, the last version seven release ever of curl. Well, hopefully, unless there's a panic and I have to do a patch release, but I consider that unlikely. So version eight, that's the next release, and we're only going to merge bug fixes because that is going to happen in, um, you know, on March twenty. March 20 also happens to be what? Yes, Curl's 25th birthday. So we only merge bug fixes because it's too too short time to open any uh, feature window. So bug fixes only, and we ship 
version 8.0.0 on March 2020-23. That's the plan. Um, that's the pending release notes as always and it will be the pending release notes for this release as well. And again, this is the final version 7. Uh, 22 and a half years. We s sort of introduced a system where we would bump the major number only when we do major changes and uh, then pretty early on in 2006 I realized or we I realized that bumping the SO name changing the ABI changing behavior is cons I mean people consider that really really painful that maybe decide that yeah I should basically just not change the ABI or behavior at all and then we didn't do that, so we stuck to version 7 and we've been sticking to it ever since. But now, of course, we don't want to go... 7.88 is a very high number, 88 being high. I don't want to reach 100, so I f wanted to figure out a way to reset that counter and this is that way. We're going version 8.0.0 in a month. If you have any problem with anything curl related uh, especially of course when it comes to commercial use your company your services or your products whatever i offer you curl support uh, from very basic to very <laughs> intense <laughs> whatever you need uh, we can help you and i do this curl support uh, via this company called wolf ssl for which i work if you find any curl issues, bugs, as we call them, go to uh, GitHub and uh, submit them. Even if it's just, you know, um, spelling mistakes in the documentation, we want them fixed. Uh, we want everything to be fine and dandy. And uh, we, of course, appreciate if you want to fix them yourself, submit a pull request uh, on the GitHub page as well and we will help you land that if you have or suspect a security problem in curl as like those we mentioned in this um, presentation already report them here and we will reward you with a cash reward in case we actually confirm it to be a security problem um, that's awesome and uh, these are of course the fabulous sponsors of curl in february 2023 it is actually thanks to all of these companies that we are doing curl the way we do we we have the site we do the business we do the uh, everything we have the infrastructure we have the testing uh, and the yeah thank you to all those uh, fine sponsors <coughs> and with this um, this is a curl 7.88.0 february 15th 2023 I will be back with another curl release presentation then on March 20, the day curl turns 25 years old. Until then then, bye.